Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and well, if you've watched my channel enough, you'll know that I really like Federal Lock, and they're made in Taiwan, but they're made really, really well. They make locks for many other, probably better known companies as well. I saw this one on eBay, uh, a refurbished one, uh, and it's a 406HE, really cute little uh, padlock with a interchangeable Euro cylinder um, core. So basically you can open this up, undo the grub screw, and then you can pull out the Euro cylinder and, uh, and change it for whatever you like. The one that came in this particular lock was a an adapter, actually yes, A-D-A-P-T-A -A -A, adapter, J40. And this is apparently a restricted keyway that comes part of some master systems. So master keying systems for, you know, um, I don't know, factories, offices, those kind of things. So um, yeah, I, I don't know anything about the lock. I tried to look online. They say nothing about what's going on in the internals. So um, yeah, um, <laughs> you know as much as I do, but let's pick it. We'll try and gut it. We'll see what's inside. So we are in the vice and um, Despite it being a restricted keyway, it seems to be enough room for me to get a 25,000th pick, uh, my monkey paw, up through the keyway. So I'm going to give it a go like that. Um, did I show you the key bitting? I don't think I did. Um, it's okay. It goes low, high, low, high, high, then very low at the end. Um, it works very nicely as you'd expect. Let's lock that back up. Good. Right, let's get picking, and then if we can pick it, we'll gut it. I'm using a cut down multi pick tool there. Um, pin three, little click. Pin five, little click. Pin two, little click. Pin six, little click. Five again, a little spool maybe. Nothing on three. One, and we're op oh, open. And we really are. That was really fast. Um, I, I swear, number five was a spool. Was it? A f I mean, I don't know. It's really hard to tell, isn't it? Um, I think so. And if it was, it's quite shallow. So, um, all right. Well, let's let's gut it and find out. I'm actually very curious now. So, with these locks, only when it's open. Does the cam at the back move out of the way enough for the lock to come out like that? Haha. <laughs> if it's not unlocked like that, so it's locked, you'll see that um, this won't actually go in. Um, it stopped recording as I was cutting it, uh, which is really frustrating. Um, you missed a lot of fight to get the circ clips off the back and and this piece out of the um, oh where is it out of the back here, which actually has a small ball bearing just down here. Um, we did, however, so sorry you missed the, the gutting of that. If you were interested in the gutting, um, what I would say though is we haven't really missed out on a lot. We found out why the lock was easy to pick. Turns out that I had picked it. Let's call it properly. Um, in that this lock does have master wafers in all of the key chambers, which isn't too surprising considering the company who makes these locks or supplies these locks do a lot of master um, uh, sweeting or master keying for commercial buildings. They were all pin side though. So that meant that I didn't have to utilize the second shear line that the master wafers offer you. Um, but the reason why it was so easy to pick was that all of the pins apart from one are spools. I was wrong. Pin five wasn't a spool. Pin one was. And it is a nice spool. Don't get me wrong. It's a good spool. It's fine. Um, it's a very nicely shaped pin, but seemingly not very effective. There aren't any anti-bump features, although the springs are very long steel springs. Um, there aren't any anti-bump features in here. It's mostly standard pins. It's wafer... Um, it's got mass wafers in there. This is clearly not intended to be a high security application just for, uh, uh, well, uh, master keying. There was one interesting feature in this lock though, which was these little holes here, 
which are dimples for what I can only assume is lost, lost ball bearing um, construction keying so that uh, you'd have your builders and they'd have one key and then you'd have uh, a, a homeowner's key for example or a realtor's key put the key in one of those places would be high enough to push a ball bearing out of the top which would then settle into one of these holes either side uh, and then when the constructor put their key in of course uh, the key wouldn't lift the key pin to the same height because of the lost distance that the ball bearing gave and the drive pin would stay in one of the key chambers so uh, yeah I mean that's interesting so it's clearly this company they do a lot of construction keying they also do a lot of master um, wafering uh, and it must be for low security applications as I said because you've got no um, security pins in the key pins no security pins apart from one on the um, uh, on the drive pin side and no anti-bump or anti-snap features that I could see although to be fair this was in a padlock so you know you probably don't need that so sorry Mr Gutting on that one um, it, it was vaguely interesting purely because of the uh, ball bearing mechanism in here I might try to film a, a reassembly video to make up for it and stick it on my side channel side noob um, so you can go watch it over there anyway thank you so much for watching um, if you like the video, please don't forget to leave a comment and a like. If you haven't subscribed, please do consider subscribing as well. It all really helps me and I'll see you all next time.